Hi, I'm Matt. Hey, I'm Bianca. And we're from EverybodySwing.com. <laughs> and we are uh, in... Uh, where are we at? Jamaica. We're in Jamaica. We're trying. <laughs> it's like day four or something know. along those lines. And it's like after a few <laughs> days, you start to you, you sleep a lot more and you start to forget where you are. And depending on how much free alcohol is just you given drink to a you, lot more. yeah, you start to forget things. So, yeah, so I had that experience last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you did. Sleep a lot and drink a lot. Uh -huh. Went to bed at uh, 8 o'clock. I don't know. It was not 8 o'clock. 10 o'clock, something like that. So. Whatever. Yeah, well, ridiculously <laughs> early anyway. Whatever. But we're actually recording today uh, in the, uh, the the Chinese restaurant. Japanese. Japanese restaurant. Japanese style. Japanese restaurant. Again, again, I, I can say a lot of things wrong today, and I'm just going to blame it on the alcohol. That's how that works. You don't drink, though. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> gonna blame it on your alcohol drinking. Um, and uh, speaking of that, I actually did swallow last night. <laughs> you, you did. Well, no, because we were on the. Where were we? I don't even know. We were somewhere, and someone told me that I should try this drink, and I tried it, and she told me it was called the swallow. So I swallowed several times. You swallowed several times. Well, about time. Somebody's getting you to do it. That's yeah. good. It's not me. Um. Well, when it tastes like vodka and cranberry juice, then I'll swallow, baby. Uh, uh. So we're recording here because it's uh, this is an amazing restaurant, and it's really, really hot outside. It is. So uh, we, we figured, hey, if we can find the shade somewhere. And uh, we are actually, although you can't see them, uh, we, are, uh, we, are, we, are, we are talking uh, to Doug and Ruby. Who are the, uh, would we call you the owners of Sapphire? Is that the technical term? Yes. Okay, you're the owners of Club Sapphire in Seattle. Yes. And, uh, and, and so they actually are one of our sponsors down here uh, to bring us here for the uh, Miss No Swimsuit Contest. And then, of course, when we head out uh, for the Everybody Swing at Hedo coming up in, uh, in late September this year. So it's, uh, it's, it's great to actually talk to you guys for the first time, actually on camera. We talk to you guys all the time, but uh, uh, never never actually record it. So Yeah, well, we're happy to be here Absolutely. and uh, share some um, audio time with you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, so, okay, so you guys, now you, you two are the owners, but you're also a couple, is that correct? Yes, yes, we are a couple. Okay, that would seem like kind of a question mark as you, as you were answering that. I thought we were married some time ago. Okay, you, oh, okay, so you are technically, see, I thought, I've never actually asked that question. Okay, so you are technically married, and how long have you been together? We have been together about uh, 11 years. 11 years? Yeah. Okay, and so were you, were you in the lifestyle before that, or did you just come into it after getting together? Well, Doug has been in the lifestyle since he was about 18. So, 18? Uh, nice high five to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of the family business that he has uh, been involved with. And then I have been in the lifestyle for almost 20 years. Now, 20 years. So. Okay. So, eight, see, i got to get back to Doug. Yeah. And I'm okay. 37. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. so, how, so when you were 18, so how did, how did that work out when you were that young? Because usually you don't hear about people that young uh, getting, getting into it. I don't think you had a choice. Yes, I didn't have much choice. Um, my parents started New Horizons. Okay. And they were involved with Original Circles. I don't know if you know that. Mm, that sounds familiar, actually. Um, they were more of a social dance club. And okay. so they would get together, I, I think maybe monthly, at like a VA hall, okay. and do drinks and dancing. Uh -huh. And then people would just leave and go to their own homes if they hooked up with someone. Mm -hmm. And, and it, was a, it was a lifestyle? Yes, lifestyle. Group. Okay, all right. And then they found out that we had this huge home. Uh -huh. So they said, hey, could we have some parties there? So they had, I think, one or two parties at our house. Okay. We had a very large house. I think it was probably 7,000 square foot or something oh, wow. like that. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. Had a pool and everything. Mm -hmm. So, but the parties, there was a lot of drinking. So okay. a lot of people got drunk. Okay. A lot of cigarette smoking. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was male dominated. Mm -hmm. All right. So the women were treated more as objects, mm -hmm. which my mother didn't like at all. Okay. And they wanted to do more parties, and my mom said, "Well, the only way we're going to do this is if we do it ourselves, and I'm going to have sit-down dinners. I'm going to have live music." You know, dancing. It's going to be more of a social club, and the sex will be there as the bonus. Right. But it's going to be from a woman's point of view. Nice. Okay. So, so New Horizons started back in 1978. 
So, wh- how would you describe a woman's point of view? What it, can you expand on you that? You want yeah. the foreplay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the foreplay, romantic. Yes. Part of it. The so, ambiance. The yes. ambiance, the dinner, the lighted candles, you know, the music, everything instead of, okay, yeah, we're here. Um, yeah, I want to fuck that woman over there, so let me grab her and go. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Caveman style. And you, yeah, and, 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 and it's more what was going on at the time. Was yeah. it? Was yeah. it? Okay. Right. So, so w- there weren't actually like key parties, were they? Were I mean, is that a real thing, by the way? I mean, yeah, you've been in it a lot. Real. They, I, that, that's. I mean, I've never actually <laughs> seen one in real life. Right. You, you hear that? You hear that joke, and you see it in movies and that type yeah. of thing. Masters of sex. They do. Masters that. of yeah. sex. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. Um, no, but it, what, they didn't do key parties, but it was definitely women were objects more, and it didn't. It was sort of the guys that determined, okay, I want to have sex with that one, so hey, sweetie, you've got to go have sex with him. Okay. Yeah. Type of thing. And I think your mom really changed the whole atmosphere or the style of the lifestyle with clubs that were starting to kind of think about, you know, coming into existence. Um, probably over the next uh, 10 or 15 years, made it a safe place okay. where women could be comfortable and really did change the lifestyle mm-hmm. around to make it cater more to what a woman wants. Okay. Because basically, I mean, if the women are happy, the guys are going to be happy. Absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, and I don't think the lifestyle would exist or wouldn't be where it is if we were still in the past and doing that where it was male dominated and it was just for the guys. I don't think it'd be as big as it is. No. Like there wouldn't be as many people in it. There may not be as many clubs or resorts like this and that. Okay, well we we actually, when we first started Lifestyle, we went on a tour of a club that had that same type of concept of, of women are in charge. And we actually ended up, they were so, so adamant about that that it actually ended up turning us both off because when we went on the tour, and it might have just been the tour guides that, that the way they described things, but again, we were brand new. We had never been to a club. I think we had, I, I think we maybe had full swapped once. I don't even know. And and uh, and they had said, you know, when, when we were going through the tour, they were looking at me as. You're a guy. You're a bad guy. You are going to do bad things. You are going to touch women inappropriately. So we have to watch you. You had a look about you. I had, yeah, oh, I knew, <laughs> well, they, they were absolutely right. Yeah, no, I, there's no He's question. Oh, that's <laughs> bad. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> um, and and it actually, I mean, it, it made me feel uncomfortable, but it actually made Bianca feel feel uncomfortable too. Like I'm I, like I'm I'm already the a, a big negative just being male, even though we were part of a couple, and I have to prove myself. As not a bad guy, um, and it was kind—it of, was kind of a turnoff. Mm-hmm. Right. But we—we we don't see that at your place, you know. So how do you work that? And when you're doing your tours and that, like letting people know this is women, like women run the show here, you know, no means no, but. And I don't know that we accentuate that women run the show so much as it's a couples club. Mm -hmm. It is for couples and and people are there as a couple, not as individuals. I think most clubs in the lifestyle are careful about their single gentleman ratios. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because a lot of times single gentlemen aren't always there for the right reasons. But I feel that with uh, proper education, orientation, tour, we've got the best single guys that you could possibly Mm -hmm. ever want to join a club. And really, you know, there's so few problems with gentlemen. People in the lifestyle now know what the lifestyle is about once they've been in it for a little while. And and I hate to pinpoint one sex versus the other. Well, I've heard, um, on the other hand, I've heard sometimes women, like single women are a lot worse than single men because we have such, like, the, you know, the rules of, you know, guys, you can't touch, you can't do this, you have to ask and all that. But women almost feel like they don't have to abide by those rules, where it should be everybody's rules. Right. Everybody has the same set of rules and... Common Curtis. Exactly. In fact, equality. Yeah. 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 It's it's funny. Well, you know, the equality is really a big question mark because I and probably many men would have no problem, and it's happened to me many times. If a woman comes up to me, whether I'm attracted to her or not, she just grabs my junk or something like that, or you know, just like does something sexual. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, it's happened Um, to you. Yeah. We're at a a club once, and. brand new like oh, I think it was the first time yeah, we went uh-huh. to that club and some lady just like went up to him and just started making out with him like crazy and she's like <laughs> caressing my cock and all this and I'm like this is kind of like, cool I don't know what to do with this I don't know I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay I'm, I'm an object alright <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> you. That's not everybody. Oh, not well. everybody would be okay with that. <laughs> that's true, but I but I find that that uh, you know that it's definitely there is there isn't an equality in that situation because a lot of men, um, especially when they're coming into it, are like this. This is just has never happened to me before. Mm-hmm. Um, when you are single. Uh, and dating or in a monogamous world and you are just kind of going to clubs that type of thing I mean yes the, the women are definitely the ones that all the you know 50 guys are looking at one girl and nobody's particularly looking at any guys mm-hmm. and so to actually be in a situation where a woman can take the charge and actually do something that would be considered inappropriate and they're not going to have their hands slapped uh, that it, it, it it's, it's kind of a kind of a question mark there. Mm-hmm. Um, so so when you are dealing with single men, so how do you how do you deal with that as far as the ratios are concerned, as far as their rules? Well, basically, what we do is we have a specific orientation and tour, which we try and educate single gentlemen on Wednesdays. So they have to attend that before they can come to any of our regular parties. All of our couples nights. Um, we will allow one single gentleman into the party for every single female that we have. Not that we're trying to match them up, mm-hmm. but just to keep our numbers gender balanced. Mm-hmm. And that seems to work very well. Most of our parties are couples nights. So gentlemen would want to get on the wait list and make sure that there's room for them to attend the party. But single gentlemen can always attend our Wednesday parties, which is always funny because you would think, oh, it's an open house for a single gentleman to come to. And so it will be a sausage fest. Well, it really ends up being very equal. We very, It's very rare that we end up with a house full of men and two women. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it works out well. We also allow single gentlemen to come to our gangbang night, which is a monthly party on Fridays, and then also on our bisexual night night, which is monthly uh, Friday party, and it works out really well, but we are a couples club, and I think we do concentrate on that. I totally understand the double standard Uh um, issue that you're talking about, which is interesting, because as a woman, I certainly sometimes think, oh, I probably should have asked permission before Mm -hmm. I just, you know, touched or whatever, and I guess as we talk about it, men do seem to be a little more aggressive. Um, I would hate to use the word predators, um, but you're right, a woman can be too. We actually did terminate the membership of one female at the old club probably 15, 12 years ago. Okay. And, you know, but that's one woman, you know, that hap- that, that has happened with, and she was just way too aggressive. Is that what it was? And you would, you would warn her? She was aggressive with people and not asking and that type of thing. Okay. Yes. And people got offended. Yeah, and we oh, kept yeah. warning her, you know, three warnings, and finally it's like, okay, you're just not suited for the lifestyle. Right. Just, Some people just don't, you know, understand, don't you know, I, I, I think. And, and I think that's the same thing with single gentlemen. I know we've talked about a little before, too, is, and again, I don't want to pinpoint single gentlemen because it could be a man in part of a couple, too, is how do you tell somebody they're being, you know, creepy mm. or they're... You know, being a predator is maybe a little bit easier to explain, but again, a word that I don't like to use. Uh, so it is hard for gentlemen, and I don't want to have double standards, you know, right. at our club or, you know, anywhere in the lifestyle. And I think that's something that we do have to keep um, kind of forefront that we don't, you know, have double standards. Mm-hmm. Right. I've noticed also there's a number of men that end up being, that could end up being problems, and a lot of them don't realize that they're being creepy. Okay. They just, it's just their natural, I mean, who they are, right. how they act, and you'll tell them you can't do that, and they're like, I'm not doing anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, they just don't understand that what they're doing is offensive. I mean, there oh, okay. are some, some guys out there that, for whatever reason, just don't have the social skills and don't understand. Right. I mean, one of the lines that I like to use during um, orientation and tour is that everything you learned in kindergarten applies here. Okay. You know, all the respect, the rules, you know, say please, thank you. Don't eat the glue. Don't eat the glue. All those work. <laughs> huh, that's good. Okay, so so you, you find that uh, yeah, I think we were we were at a, we we've come to many of the you know the Wednesday nights because uh, Bianca will often teach pole dancing classes there, uh, and and it's, it is interesting the, the mix of, of men and or the single men and the single women. We were yeah we were there one day and there were there were, must have been just a random Wednesday and there were like a dozen single guys and a dozen single girls and we're like. I've never seen so many single girls before. Is, I'm a Matt in a candy store. I mean, it was, uh, yeah. Uh, so it, it is great that, 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 that women are finding 
that it's okay to come alone or with a girlfriend, that type of thing, and uh, enjoy their sexuality as whatever it might be. Um, um, I think we've, I've, we've run, yeah, we, I think we've run into a couple of creepy women. I, you know, I, I guess I, I guess I have seen myself that I feel sometimes that I don't know how to act, or I don't know if I'm crossing that line of what someone would consider creepy, even though I don't consider it creepy. Uh, Matt, I don't think you would ever be. I, I don't think you would ever be creepy. You've never <laughs> watched my videos. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, but, but it's right because I mean, at the club, I'm very comfortable. You know, I walk through, I do the orientations, I do the tours, I say these rules. You know, you know, at least three times a week, at mm -hmm. least. You know, um, so I'm saying these rules, but you know, then I do have to, you know, remind myself that I'm so comfortable there and having such a good time that. Yeah, I still have to follow those rules and not just go up and grab some guy's junk, mm. you know. Well, yeah, and I think we've all done that. That, like, you know, I've gone up to people and just grabbed their butt or kissed the back <laughs> of their neck or whatever, and then they were like, "Who did that?" And I was like, hee -hee -hee -hee. <laughs> "You know, as you run away." Yeah, but that's someone that you know. Oh, well, it's you, always yeah, someone I know. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't just do that to someone I didn't know. Right? <laughs> yeah, as much as you might want to. And I think that's a right. huge difference too, because if you're new to the lifestyle. You'll see that behavior, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you'll go, "Oh, well, I can do that too," and not realizing that you all know each other, right? So that's the big. That's thing. true because we've seen that actually quite a bit here, yes. Where because we have a lot of friends that are here on this specific trip that will come up and do something to Bianca, and then some guy that we just met for, and talked to for five minutes in the pool or yeah. whatever, and of course has seen her naked because they were in the naked pool with hundreds of other people. Uh, and we'll do the same thing and come up and kiss her neck or whatever it might be and it's like yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 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 Or like we were um, at the pool the other day and Matt was with one group of people and I was with another group of people and he was making out with some woman and then eventually my group kind of went their own way and I was standing by myself and went, oh, I'm by myself, where's Matt? <laughs> went over and found Matt and because Matt was making out with this guy's wife, he thought it was like uh, like the opportunity to just be like, hey, yeah, look at me. I'm like, I don't even know you. Yeah, so yeah he didn't even talk little... to you at that point. No, but... I didn't even. I still never got his name. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a couple of comments. His face has been in, getting glitter on him, and <laughs> I still don't think we've had the, hi, I'm Bianca, your name is. <laughs> and I, I think that's something that does happen, you know, whether it's here at the resort or, or at a club. Some gentlemen just don't quite get the protocol, and they will, you know, maybe make a dive for the pussy lips or the butt, mm -hmm. you know. And really, they haven't even made it to first base, which is the hi, how are you? And again, I think they're, yes. you know, comfortable, which is great, but we still must have manners. Right. <laughs> well, and I do wonder, too, if some people feel like they're in vacation mode, so it's a little bit more of a free-for-all than, like, for example, at a club. We were on a trip um, on one of the cruises, and um, Matt and someone, they were hunting for me um, to find someone, oh, and cool. she went up to, uh, it was a single gen gentleman, um, and was like, this is Bianca, and, and like, he just instantly put his hand down my panties, and I was just like, uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> oh, I don't even remember that. Yeah, no, I was like, I'm out, I'm done, like, you didn't even say hello or anything. He like did that and then handed me his card. I immediately threw it away. I'm like, I'm not calling you. I'm not going to your room. Wow. That was so inappropriate. Um, I, I mean, I, I very I, uncomfortable I, with that. I mean, I commend his balls. I mean, that's you know. <laughs> I didn't that, see his balls. Well, <laughs> well, not not literal. I mean, his balls were all right. I mean, you know, apparently I knew the guy or something. No, uh, but, oh. we had just gone up and met him. Like, oh. um, she had. Uh, that you guys. It was that time that you guys were like trying to find someone for me oh, okay. to keep me busy like right. I couldn't do it myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and she's like, okay, so who haven't you been with? Have you been with a guy that has a lot of piercings? Have you been with this and this and this? And I'm like, I'm so vanilla. <laughs> so anyway, she just goes up to this one guy who's like, this would be a good person. And I'm like, are you pawning me off? Like, what's going on? But yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm done. And yeah. Yeah, it was very awkward for me. But if someone were to come up and like kiss me, or you know, that's to me, it's a, it's a lot different yeah. than just. You know, you know that, and actually, kissing is an interesting thing because um, in the lifestyle, people kiss when they meet. 
and that is just such an un-American thing in this day and age yes. uh, that I, I, I definitely knew people are like, wait, oh, you're trying to kiss me? Like they'll turn their they turn their face. It's always they're weird. Not, we... They're not sure. And then after you've been doing it for a few months, and everybody, you know, because you meet someone, and very often you will kiss them on the mouth, yeah. um, and I mean just you know a pack. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't know, in France. Well, no, France is the size. I don't know, but, um, well, it's always weird, though, when you go home from a trip like this, and you're like, oh, I can't just make out with anybody. <laughs> I'm at the grocery store, oh, you're so nice, I like your hair. Oh, wait, no, I can't kiss you, sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, or people that you know really well at home yeah. in the vanilla world, and you go up and you give them the hug and the normal kiss, but you kiss them on the lips. Yeah. <laughs> like, why, 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 <laughs> so, so... When when okay so so uh, Doug when you were in the lifestyles since you were since you were a youngin yes. lucky dog yeah. uh, <laughs> and uh, so so when you met you were you were already in the lifestyle as well at that point yes okay. actually I, I was yeah. in the lifestyle and so we kind of knew each other for almost what, six seven years um, you know in the lifestyle mm -hmm. uh, attended parties and um, did some traveling with our partners and stuff and then a couple years we were both uh, single and sort of started talking to each other a little more seriously and sort of all just happened next thing you know we're here <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know, right? it's so much easier though yeah. right because then you don't have to like if you get like a vanilla girlfriend you have to like try and bring her in or ease her in <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah I did dating as a single female um, in the vanilla world and it's like as a single female how the heck do you ever tell a man that you're meeting or just starting to date that you're in the lifestyle yeah mm. I mean that's just an awkward <laughs> conversation well I found that because you know we've we, we're not only are we swingers but we're also polyamorous and I date uh, I mean, I have a girlfriend. She has a boyfriend, but she's perfectly content with just just the two penises. But but I'm I, I want as many vaginas as I can get, and so uh, I, so I date uh, out there, and I definitely have run into that same type of problem where it's just kind of like if I try to have a conversation with a girl and she's beautiful and it's a, it, and we have so much in common, but she's monogamous that that conversation just falls everything just falls apart so I don't even try I don't even try it's kind of like I want to find the girls that are in the same mindset first and then hopefully all the other stuff things that we have in common hiking or you know scuba or whatever it might be that we connect as a secondary which is exactly the opposite as right. you would do in a monogamous well, world and when before I met my boyfriend when I first started dating and I was very honest on my profile as well you know I have you know I'm, I'm in lifestyle I'm married all this um, I got dick pics although my boyfriend did send me one but I kept him around anyways <laughs> if you saw it oh I gotta plug him too right that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you saw it you would keep him around as well <laughs> <laughs> We have a joke that Matt always talks about himself on every about, podcast. What about myself? About your little tiny... No. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say it. I thought no. you were, were going to say how big dick? my penis was. Oh, it's big? Oh, I'm right. sorry. All it's right. big. It's huge. Anyway. Anyway, so back to Club Sapphire. Okay. Um, so what, what types of events do you do throughout the year? We do um, parties every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, as I was uh, talking about. And they're kind of a dance, social, we're an on-premise club, so we have uh, playrooms and play spaces that people are more than welcome to use. Uh, Beautiful playrooms. Thank you. Thank you. Kind of all different. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep a little variety out there. But definitely a very social group, very active. Lots of new people are finding us and uh, coming out to the club, which is awesome for the Seattle area. So we also do trips to hedonism too, and we do trips to Cancun, and I know you guys have been on some lifestyle uh, cruises. Mm -hmm. We also do our ocean takeovers uh, twice a year. Which What's is that? Complete hotel takeover that we do. Uh, spring fling is coming up at the end of March, and then we have Wild and Westport in the fall. 
and we have an amazing hotel with a staff that is, loves us <laughs> and I think want to be part of our parties. <laughs> well, so let me, let me stop you there. So with Wild and Westport, so would you, do you allow people from all over the country to come or just members of the club? Or if, if someone was in town, for example, and they're like, hey, I'm visiting Seattle that week, can I, can I drive out to the coast and join you guys? Would we love to have people join us. We do sell out uh, mm -hmm. generally, so last minute decision would only work if they were able to find other. Well, not necessarily last to minute, stay. but uh, yeah. But we no, we love to have people awesome. from all over. Yeah, we've had people from you know Canada all across the states. Uh, people traveling, I think, from Canada down to Phoenix a yeah. couple times. You know, come and hit our uh, hotel table. Sure. So, awesome. yeah. so I, I and I know that this past year you were voted the best lifestyle club on the West Coast. Right. right. Best lifestyle club in the West. In the West. In the West. Because right. it's, it's funny because it, we nominated you because for whatever reason in the past your club just was never in the list of nominated ones. We and, were I, too new. and I said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, it's right, exactly. So I nominated you, and then you won the first year. I was like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's great. So um, and it's because you guys have a really cool club. It really. Um, uh, and we've been to quite a few of them around the country too, and and we're. Honestly, saying that you know, and something you. One, like yeah. kind of circling back to the whole like the single guys and the you know just inappropriateness that can happen. I have never once had any issue with a single guy at, at Sapphire. If they've always been very respectful, mm -hmm. um, they'll come talk to us. We had one time we were eating beforehand, and <laughs> some, some single gentleman came up and sat with us, and we were chatting with him a bit, and then he like offered to take our plates. Like he. At one point, I wanted a napkin, and I didn't see where they were, and I said, oh, you have a napkin, where'd you get it? And he's like, let me go grab you one. He was gone for like 15 minutes searching for a napkin because he couldn't find one. <laughs> and then he was so attentive, and then he like came and, um, oh, can I take your garbage for you? And he was so sweet and attentive. It was, like, it was actually above bad, and beyond like, that he was actually almost, he, he wanted us so much to be a good single guy that he became our waiter. So, I, I, <laughs> see, I told you we train our there, single guys. You do train them really well. Training. That's good but training. I mean, I've heard stories from other clubs where you've got like the single guys watching, and we've had that experience at a different club um, where they were just kind of like in the room, just you know, masturbating or whatever in the corner, not in the corner, like practically on top of you and that kind of stuff. And we've never, I mean, they, like I said, they take care of us at your club. <laughs> but we do have, you know, a few rules in place, uh, and it's not just single gentlemen because it could be uh, the male part of a couple that sure. is suddenly finding himself by himself so they are not allowed to go into the playrooms which is one of our rules but it seems to work well they have to be either with a couple or a single female to go into an actual playroom okay. so I think that kind of helps we have a nice area where they can come back and sit and be part of the back area but not actually in the playroom so mm -hmm. it seems to work well for you know where we're at with it right okay. now. Yeah. And, and how many people are at an average Saturday party um, our Saturday parties average usually 150 to 200, and we've had uh, like a no Valentine's Day, we were just slightly over 300. Mm -hmm. um, so our big parties, Mardi Gras, we just had was 260. Uh, Wow. And so, and you, can, what, what's That's the max awesome. that you can fit into the into the building? Uh, right around three hundred. Right around three hundred. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's great. Hey, max, yeah, because yeah, we've been there on the New Year's and the Halloween yeah. parties where it's like, wow, I can barely move, yeah. and it's fantastic. Yeah. I love awesome. that. So yeah. We need more space. That's so. Next so, well, that was my next oh, okay. question. So, do you have expansion plans, or what's next for Sapphire? That is what we would like to do. We would like to expand. Um, I'm sorry, I heard buy more poles. <laughs> yeah. We need another pole or two for Bianca. Yes, um, please, with larger cans for. But we do, we would like to expand a little bit more. We've got some different ideas we need. We don't need, maybe, but we feel like we would like to have a little more play space, more private areas, maybe a more lawyer type area where people can sit around and watch couples. So just more variety in the back area. And you can always have bigger social area and bigger, you know, dance area. But right now our focus is on a little more play space. Okay. okay. But we are at uh, about 7,000 square feet. We would like to get up to about 10,000 eventually. Wow. And if someone was coming in from out of town, how would they find you? They can actually go on our website, and if they go to the parties, our address is listed there. You can also Google it. We have... You can find us pretty easy, sure. and our address is um, listed. So and you can either put in Seattle or Tukwila. Okay, and it's <laughs> www. 
Club Sapphire. Club Sapphire. Club Sapphire. Yes, right? dot net. Yes, dot net. Okay. That Club Sapphire us. dot net. Okay, perfect. Um, well, thank you so much for for joining us. Yes, this is, well, this thank this you. Been, we love having fun. you guys here. I'm so honored that you uh, allowed us to be on your podcast. Oh, hey, no, hey, thanks, thanks for sponsoring this trip. It's wonderful. Uh, yeah, so definitely, if you are in the Seattle area, and even if you're not in the Seattle area, just you know, when you just trip. come, yeah, make oh, a yeah. trip. It's it's uh, the, the the West Coast gets ignored in the lifestyle for some reason, yeah. and uh, we've got some pretty awesome people on the West Coast. Absolutely, uh, and some awesome clips, sexy, like sexy, wet. Seattle people, right? And uh, <laughs> exactly. uh, and uh, and of course, if you feel like coming down to hedonism, uh, you can always go to uh, Tom's Trips. They are there are other sponsor here. They're the amazing lifestyle resort uh, travel agency. So they do the cruises and the trips and that. And they will be uh, our sponsor down here for everybody swing at Hedo, which happens at the end of September. And if you're missing this year because you're watching this video like five years in the future, um, it's awesome that the Seahawks won five times in a row like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also that uh, just go to the website on the screen right now, HitoTakeover.com, and it'll show you the dates for this year. All right. And if you have any questions, you can email us at info at everybodyswing.com. All right. Anything else you want to say? No, thank you. Yep. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.